What I didn't expect was a dumpster diving hippie and a greasy looking fucking man as the main leads of this movie hey guys welcome back to my channel today i'm super excited because we're going to be talking about a book by colleen hoover that is now going to have a movie in august i was not sure about whether or not i was going to read this book especially because i know personally i said i don't really like colleen hoover's writing and on top of that i even asked for recommendations on whether or not i should read this book and people were just saying no so i decided to do it anyways because i was more so curious especially because the fandom was really you know having an entire uproar about the fact that the styling of Lily is just absolutely it's horrendous we can all disagree her outfits are the most stank ugly things I've seen in my entire life Colleen Hoover actually defended the outfits and said that um what the styling was in the trailer isn't all that it is so she has trust and faith in the directors and their choice of styling which I'm like girl that book is your baby but it, it's okay it's okay we can it's okay um first things first I wanted to get into the fact that it ends with us is a book that I wanted to read a long time ago and I'm kind of glad that I never did and I read variety first because this book is um not bad but not it's not good to the point where I was going to read it starts with us to make this a whole interview pairing I'm an interview girl what this is it starts with us <laughs> this is what it's currently living in um I'm sending it back first things first I want to start with kind of why I decided to, to not read it starts with us and I'm gonna have a couple of spoilers in this video so again if you guys are not into spoilers definitely click off and read the book for yourself and come back and enjoy this video but I'm gonna start with why I didn't want to read it starts with us and it's honestly mainly because I didn't really think that it needed a second book to be frankly honest I feel like the second book is kind of unnecessary and with the ending I don't know why it wasn't ended as just that I know a lot of people rooted for a second book and that is why Colin Hoover decided to write it starts with us um and I was reading reviews after it ends with us and a lot of um, reviews were saying that she rushed through the book because she never wanted to write it in the first place. And I was like, okay, honestly valid. And because I wasn't into it ends with us, I did not see a point in forcing myself into reading the second book either, because honestly, like the reasons why I wasn't into it, you'll soon learn throughout this story video i want to start with the beginning of the book the beginning of the book chapter one i was kind of confused on how things would even escalate with lily and ryle i don't really think it actually made any sort of sense on why ryle and lily had any sort of attraction towards each other at the beginning of the book because to me the whole thing was a red fucking flying flag from the very beginning and i think it underestimates lily's survival instincts a lot and it kind of bothers me how she's characterized as some moving part to tell the story of abuse but doesn't really give her um true cognitive choices and reactions in the moment of worrisome situations you know like so she's on this rooftop and she is obviously leaving a funeral in which her dad was the deceased and she's kind of having some mixed weird emotions because she's kind of glad that her dad died because he's away from her mom and he will no longer hurt her mom and stuff but then at the same time she's kind of like in a weird state of grieving because her dad was kind of good to her and so she's kind of in like that weird mixture of emotions I feel like it didn't really go into those emotions well enough to be frankly honest I never personally experienced that and I feel like they could have Oh, they, Colleen Hoover, could have gone a little bit more deep into those emotions so that we can actually find some sort of connection to Lily in that moment. Or maybe the intention of Hoover was to just not have us be able to relate. And that's not that bad of, you know, you never know an author's true intention and in just not including something or including something. I don't know. But I feel like personally, as someone who was reading, I would have loved to actually feel some sort of connection to Lily as a character. But it felt like she was just kind of a puzzle piece and moving the plot along and kind of getting the message that she wanted out out there which it, me personally I don't like seeing characters used that way on that day obviously Riles also on this rooftop and he witnessed not witnessed he was dealing with like um a brother having a, 
accident with shooting his other brother and the brother died all right that happens in ryle which why the fuck is his name ryle i can't get over that like i swear sometimes colleen hoover as a writer her names the names she chooses for people to me is so questionable like lily bloom blossom or lily blossom bloom or something i'm like girl come on and then she wants a flower shop it's like okay i understand she points out the cliche but the fact that she wanted that cliche in the first place to be a cliche i'm like okay that being said he's also on top of there and they start this weird game where they like tell each other full truths you know what i mean hard truths whatever it is and this entire situation to me was kind of weird it was very trauma dumping it's very much giving okay like this is going to lead into like a toxic sort of relationship because trauma dumping at the beginning of a relationship is always always a red flag but then on top of that they're trauma dumping and he straight out says that he wants to have sex with her it didn't even feel remotely love bomby it didn't really feel like they were even having sort of any sort of connection within their dialogue. I guess she found him attractive, but I feel like maybe because again, like I'm kind of like asexual. So I guess I don't necessarily understand how she can go feral for a man that like she barely really knows. But then all of a sudden it's like, I don't know, like just like the way that that situation unfolded, I feel like we could have gone without the violent, um, announcement that he wanted to fuck her he totally could have gone with something where there was tension from the beginning that was silent and unspoken and there were certain movements that were kind of coercive and intense and there was more details and action rather verbal i think that's the thing that kind of made me disconnected from how we can get from point a to point b i just thought that was quite strange and it also led me to not understand how lily was able to receive that information and not really feel anything by it like i swear like her emotions i know nothing like at this point i feel like i don't really see what's going on in her head but at the same time we are getting like little bits and pieces of okay I kind of like this but it's like girl bitch why like why do you like this like what what is there that makes it so that you can accept this behavior from this person I feel like that is definitely missing at the same time pretty much around the same time we also get introduced the fact that she fell in love with a homeless man and had sex with him not even that he they fell in love she just said i fucked a homeless man like that's a statement she said i fucked a homeless man to the point where she says in high school i fucked a homeless man and i'm just in there and i'm like okay um colleen what the fuck because okay initially i really thought like she effed a homeless man meaning this man was not remotely near her age and it was like some man on the street that she found in like new york city and was like yeah let's bone um i don't even know this is not even placed in new york city i have no idea where they're at i forgot but yeah so i was just like brother like mm, mm, what do you mean what do you mean um and then so then they boink and we don't figure out until later on that that's atlas and he was in fact homeless but he was not a grown man i don't know I feel like I got baited. Like I got so debated in that moment because I was like, why are you having, okay. I don't really like how Lily is so reliant on men in the story. It feels her only way out of this situation was with the support of Atlas, which I kind of get it. I understand that like, of course everyone needs support, especially when going through something so hard as that. But I feel like, again, Again, this is kind of complicated because I do know that when she fell pregnant and I love how I say fell pregnant, like she got freaking like COVID or something. Anyways, when she got pregnant, when <laughs> she was impregnated, um, I realized that, you know, she did leave for her future child. Like that is without a doubt. That's mostly why she left. But I feel like because it focuses on like this weird romance aspect on the side, it kind of left me feeling a little bit rubbed the wrong way. Um, I know, of course, because then again, and it starts with us, um, Ryle is back for some god awful reason like he's literally an abusive piece of shit and yet he's like back into the story because she decides that even though he is super problematic has anger aggression she's totally fine with him visiting with their child and it just really bothers me because of course it shows a different angle of abuse because i know for a fact there's so many people that go through it where they want to have the father of the child like or mother of the child in the child's life but i think that it's hard for me 
personally to read a book like it starts with us and have read it ends with us and have it starts with us be so rushed again I didn't even read it starts with us but by the reviews of people saying like it was so rushed and not cared for and not like as like there's not as much love put into that book it's kind of like okay then why do that you know I think the awareness is important but if you're going to spread awareness you have to do it incredibly well you know and I feel like you have to pay attention to all the different nuances and stuff and I think that the conveniences in the story was kind of crazy like you're going to tell me okay I'm sorry I'm jumping around so much and I know I am but you're going to tell me that she has her flower shop like six months later and then magically she meets Ryle's like sister and she wants to work there for free like, I think the conveniences are kind of crazy. And then all of a sudden, of course, like, it makes sense that why he's in Boston. I'm pretty sure they're in Boston. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. I keep, like, naming random ass places. Um, but they're, like, off, right? And you're going to tell me that they all <laughs> end up in Boston. And, like, you know, you're going to tell me that, like, Atlas is just, like, you know, magically there. And this entire time she doesn't even try to search for him I think that's the thing that gets to me about this story too is that like she obviously still cares for Atlas and is longing for him and all this other stuff and she's in this abusive relationship but before then she was not in this relationship whatsoever and this entire time she never searched any ounce of that town for this man I think that's the thing that's so confusing but she kept magically the pendant or whatever I forgot like the little thing she kept that in memory of him and moved to the exact same place that it says but then doesn't look for him at all I I love the fact that in the end if she was with anyone it was with someone who was there for her and cared for her like Atlas you know what I mean like I think that makes sense and I feel like that was appropriate I just do think that this book had a lot of like conveniences that were kind of crazy the one scene like where there's this one scene that I can't get out of my head that kind of it really bothers me how it was set up because I don't think any rational human whether because I've been in my own personal situations which I will not get into obviously whether you're you know been through that or not we know damn well bitches that you would get the ick and run out of that fucking apartment there is no fucking way because there's this one scene right I think this is like in the second is this in the second chapter I skipped over this because of my own personal reasons I didn't want to read that um but so basically <sighs> Ryle comes and shows up to her apartment and apparently knocked on like 32 apartment doors or 28 or something ridiculous to try to find her apartment after um she like yeets her ankle and then like is hurt or whatever and he comes to her apartment and she's like, why the fuck are you here? You freak. You told me to not be around you. And he's like, I can't get you out of my head. I want to fuck you that bad. And I'm like, you know what I mean? And she's like, no, I don't want to. And he's like, this is where it gets horrible because I, one, they barely know each other. And I think that's the part that gets me. They don't know each other like that. Like they don't know each other. Okay. And he starts begging. He's like, please, please. And then he falls onto his knees. He's grabbing onto her. She's, he's begging for his entire being for f sex, you know. And she's being pressured. She feels weird. She's like, I want to, but I don't and all this other stuff. And then she's like, let me take a shower. And after the shower, when I'm clean, maybe we can. I skip over this portion, right? So I don't know if they actually end up having intimacy or not because I felt severely uncomfortable. Um personal reasons so I skipped over that portion and I was just like absolutely not and also I'm not gonna lie as some strange man that I don't know is begging on his knees for me <laughs> in my apartment I'm like get the fuck out it's not like I'm not not ever victim blaming I don't know what I would do in that situation either to be fair but post that situation whatever whatever the conclusion is whether you end up getting together physically or not right you're gonna tell me you start to develop romantic feelings because I'm, I'm giving you a halt here again they saw each other for the first time in six months there was no conversations that have have occurred between them all that there is is this trauma dumping you know what I mean all there is is trauma dumping and all there is is him saying he wants to fuck her and her being like not but we also have to 
say this, she did experience real love with Atlas, right? She experienced a real developed relationship, one that was healthy and one that was positive outside of witnessing her mother and father and their horrible relationship. So I think that's the thing that confuses me between the two is I'm not sure how she does not at one time at least compare Ryle and Atlas together. And as she's reading her weird fucking Ellen DeGeneres ass letters, she doesn't once reflect on her relationship or her budding relationship with Ryle and her relationship with Atlas and long for Atlas and be like, maybe this is not right for me. I think that's the thing that like really confuses me. And again, this is why I think that being inside of Lily's head a lot more is a requirement. I don't even think it was an option. I think that there should have been a lot more of you know Lily and where she was at because at this point I don't I can't understand her as a character a lot of people might be able to relate to her in certain aspects and different angles right because of course everyone's experience everyone's story when it comes to like abuse and stuff is very different there's so many different situations that you could possibly get into with stuff like that so that's why I'm like I'm not victim blaming her I think I just can't see how we're getting to point a to point b to point c and this is purely because of the writing style and i don't think it's necessarily like a bad book for people to relate to i just think that it's a very underdeveloped story in a sense where you're not able to see exactly where lily is coming from and the decisions that she's making because her emotional awareness as a character is not well developed like i can just tell it's not very well developed one major thing in this book that is present is themes of sexual assault domestic violence and things like that and with such a heavy topic i feel like there should have been a little bit more um again development in the emotions and understanding where Lily was coming from in her mental state at the time. I feel like it doesn't really go into her overall pains um, that she has. Um, I think it's really surface level. Maybe she, like, again, it might be purposeful. We're calling who we didn't want to um, after she got hit by Atlas go into so into depth with how Lily felt because I know for a fact she does talk about how she didn't want to become like her mom which I'm like great but I feel like there was no senses no like development like where she kind of let everything fall onto the page of how it felt in that moment there should have been more build up in this relationship because there's so much to domestic violence and there's so much to the topic so heavy and I feel like you have to really treat it carefully. Part of it felt a little bit fan fiction based and the reason why I say that um, me and my sister were talking about it. She mentioned it and she was like, honestly, what probably is bothering you is that somewhat of it feels like a fan fiction, especially the beginning. I feel like mostly like the first chapter really felt kind of fan fiction you know it felt very much like okay this is what this is but I'm gonna fall into it so fast so easily and like you know have this love just boom out of nowhere but like there was no slow burn in it to make her fall into it a little bit more so when we're engaging with the bad stuff with the red flags with the problems in the relationship it doesn't make sense because it's happening in such a short span of time and I'm like that's not of course, some abuse is really fast. I've honestly, that's kind of my experience. I've experienced things really fast. Typically that involves love bombing and it involves some sort of like manipulation. And I feel like with Ryle, there was none because the funny thing is, is he outwardly stated how should of a person he was because he literally said, I don't want children. I don't want like marriage. I don't want people. I don't want a girlfriend. I don't want this. And then she plainly says that she wants all of those things. So for me personally, like after the she fingers out that they're not compatible, she meets him after six months. She still finds him so, so hot, sexy, fine, whatever. And, you know, she's thinking with her coochie booch. I'm like, okay, so like you're thinking with your coochie booch. Totally fine if you sleep together. But like, I'm confused on how her actual feelings developed for him. Like there's actually nothing that gives like, oh, their feelings actually developed and went somewhere. Or she felt like she needed him of some sorts. Or you know what I mean? Like there felt like there was like no need, no no relationship. Like I don't really see it. What I pictured of Ryle and of Lily, love me, Serena Vander Wilson. Okay, 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 okay. Excuse me. I love her. But 
it was not that. It really wasn't. I know they aged them up as well. So I don't know. I just feel like for me personally, the book just did not hit. I understand that there's so many people that relate to it. I understand in what sense why. But I feel like the actual like plot and storytelling fell short for me. And I find that really unfortunate because I would have loved to love that book, honestly. But I'm definitely curious about your guys' opinions down below. Kind of the things that you really loved about the book. Some things that you hate about it. Um, just let me know. I'm curious. I feel like this story story has so much popularity and things like that and I feel like for good reason I feel like a lot of people can connect to it and I feel like that's the point um but I do think as someone who's an avid reader and someone who's also someone who majored in English and studied creative writing it's hard not to look at the story and feel like it's a little bit underdeveloped um in some aspects but that being said i really appreciate you guys for watching this video i really hope you guys enjoyed it as well and please don't kill me hoovers i promise i don't think she's like a horrible person or anything i just feel like this book was just not it i am I'm scared for my life right now but it's okay the truth is out the the tea is hot <laughs> i'll see you guys in the next one bye